Hello everyone and is it okay yeah that's recording. So hello everyone and welcome back to Siberia where we've just made a deal with a nut case to um bring forth a a person. Seems this monorail is controlled from somewhere else. Oh it's a monorail I just thought it was an elevator. But fair enough. I mean why have an elevator when you've got a perfectly good ladder. Anyway, so we've made a deal with that maniac that we need to bring um, Helena something or other um, back here so that um, the maniac can play the organ at her. Whether that's all he wants to do, I don't know. No! No. Clicking there does not equate to ha wanting to leave. Hmm. Okay, fucking. Yeah, it's just... Eh, whatever. That's a load of dresses and that's a... Some sort of makeup table thingy. A couple of the lights have gone out. I think one or two of them might actually be broken. Young Helena Romanski's crystal clear voice moves amateurs and professionals alike. Uh, excellent. Well, that's a bit cracked. Comrade. Helena Romanski sings for the people. Her series of recitals with piano performed in the great in, in the factories of our great republic. After Kiev, our diva arrives at Komkolsgrad. So that's the the factory di director, and I think that's Hans. Hmm. Song with her great friend, the Russian tenor Frank Malkovich. Recently decided to pursue, pursue his career in the United States and is dating our mother. Well, Kate's mother. Not your mother. No, my mother. Kate's mother. Um, this day evening, adoring crowds fill out the Bolshoi to say their fond farewells to Helena Romanski. Um, So she was quite ill when she decided to then. So not known at Moscow. Moscow. Hmm. So dear old Sergei has been writing to one address for at least 112 times without a single response because I think that's probably the only address he has. However, we have a clue that we can call Mother because Mother is dating the tenor Frank Malkovich and blah 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 blah. Hi Mom. Kate! What? Have you seen the time? Why are you phoning me in the middle of the night? Oh, sorry Mom, I forgot about the time zones. Did I wake you? Um, well, of course you woke me up. I, I was sleeping deeply, too. I simply got to get my beauty sleep. I've got an absolutely crazy day tomorrow. I'm sorry. It's just that it's real important and urgent. I haven't got a lot of time. Well, if it really can't wait till tomorrow, Munchkin, come on, tell your mommy what's up. Uh, no way I'm calling Dan for you, if that's what you want. Mom, listen, please. I seem to remember you're seeing a Marovich or something like that at the moment. No, 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 no. Malkovich, Munchkin. Frank Malkovich. Yeah, right. So, but he's an opera singer, right? That's right. They say he had the finest voice of his time, my dear. Imagine that. That's just great. So then he must have known a famous singer called Helena Romansky. She's Russian, too. 
please, if you can ask him if... Listen, honey, if it's stars you're after, Frank knows them all. I'll just wake him up and let him tell you himself. You mean he's... Frank, do you know this, um, this woman named Whitney? Oh, you do? Oh, Kate, listen, you're still there. Frank tells me he did hang out with the Romansky once, but it was platonic. You know those singers. She's a great soprano. Great! Does he know where she went? Does, does she still sing? Where does she live? One second, Munchkin. Do you know? Oh, oh. Frank says she was very ill and she withdrew from circulation. Really? Oh, what is... Oh, oh okay. Um, she went to rest in some spa somewhere. He thinks it was called Arrowbad, but it was 15 years ago and he's not sure. And, well, honey... When Frank wakes up, he always takes a little bit of time to get going, you know. Thanks a bundle, Mom. And Frank, too. You're both fantastic. Love you both. And thanks again. Catch you later. Hmm. Well, excellent. It's it's always a good good way to find out that your mother's sleeping with someone. You know, making a call like this. Uh, anyway. So suppose we need to report to our idle taskmaster, the Cray Cray of Hello? Did I wake you up? I can't sleep at all. This whole business just keeps turning round and round in my head. What business, Dan? But Kate, that argument we had, have you forgotten? I really need to talk about that again. Oh, you know, I, I guess we were both a little high-strung, that's all. But don't sweat it, okay? Yeah, sure. Getting carried away never solves anything, does it? I must say, I felt really dumb when I hung up. Really? Yeah. I feel really dumb my right now. Open and I was convinced everybody around heard me. Oh. I'm so embarrassed, Dan. Please say I'm sorry to your colleagues from me. It doesn't matter, honey. Promise me that you will never put me in that state again. You're usually so delightful. I have the impression that this journey is putting more than distance between us. Well, it's true. I'm living a whole load of new and amazing experiences. Okay, I see. And uh, still no Hans Warlberg? No. Keep me posted. You know how important you are to me. Hurry home, huh? I'll try. Big hug, Dan. Oh, isn't that sweet? You there, Weirdo. Director. Ah, oh, it is you, Miss Walker. Isn't Director, it just? I think I know where Helena Romansky is. I don't. My God, you have found Helena. That is fantastic. From my research. Helena Romansky is living in Arlbad. Arlbad? Helena Romansky is in Arlbad. You know the town then? You know where it is? Of course. It was a famous spa resort. In its heyday, Arlbad welcomed all the big wigs of the regime. To be granted a stay there was a real honor. Today, the honor has gone along with all the generals and colonels, all washed away with the sea. It sounds like a good place if you need to take it easy or convalesce. I think Madame Romansky would be happier here. I think she'll prefer the peace and quiet here, the perfect tranquility of our little town. Okay, but we need you know, to... I could get there ten times quicker if you gave me my automaton's hands back. Then I could use my train. Out of the question that I tamper with my pianist now. Please understand. There are still one or two finer adjustments that I must make before Helena arrives. Of course, of course. Um... Why don't you come with me? After all, you're the person in the best position to convince Helena Romansky. Unfortunately, since my accident, 
I seldom leave my office if I can avoid it. And it is not wise for a director to leave his city now, is it? How can I get to Arrowbad? There is one way that you can. Here, in the city, there are no suitable vehicles left. But that drunk old fool living up there, he'll have something. What drunken old fool? You mean you're not alone? What's up there? You mean you haven't noticed the space compound on the plateau? There's still some pathetic old soldier guarding it. But he's more interested these days in reaching for another bottle than reaching for the stars. And you think this gentleman could have a vehicle for me? I haven't the slightest idea. If you catch him on a good day, then maybe. But good days for him are far and few between. I wish you luck. How do I get up to the space compound, then? There is a monorail that leads up to the Cosmodrome. When you are inside, I will activate the automatic pilot. Excellent. Okay. I Hello? Kate! Oh, that you? How are you? Olivia! Great, just the right person. Look, have you heard of Helena Romansky? Uh, no. Is she some Russian fashion designer? <laughs> no, she's a singer. I'm going to be meeting her soon. I've just got to find a way of reaching Arlbad. Can you imagine how lucky I am? Not really. Well, what relations this singer got with the toy cocaine? You sure you know what you're up to, Kate? Uh, you sound really different, like you're changing or something. Look, it's like this. If I'm going to get to the end of my journey, I've got to link up this singer and the director of the Komkalsgrad Industrial City. Don't worry, I know exactly what I'm doing. Why did you say that I've changed? I don't know, just an impression. You sound more sure of yourself, like stronger, more confident. And that's a problem? There you go. Just takes one word and you're up on your high horse. I'm beginning to see Dan's point of view. It's getting harder and harder to back you up all the time. What does that mean? Well, it means that I had a drink or two with Dan, because he wants to talk. He feels a bit lonely, you see? And what's he been telling you? Nothing. He just has the impression you're slipping away from him. He can't see where you're coming from anymore. Like, we went to the movies the other day, and he said that you would have loved the film, but I told him that... You mean you're dating my fiancé? No! No, not dating Kate, just propping him up while you're away. All in a good cause. I can keep an eye on him for you at the same time. What would I do without you? Oh, you're jealous. Well, that's a good sign. That means you want him. Now that he'll be pleased to hear. You seeing each other again soon? Tomorrow night. He invited me to dinner at the Goldberg. You don't mind, do you, Kate? No, no, no worries. Look, I've got to go, Olivia. Take care. Ah, oh, Olivia, you heinous, heinous bitch. Nothing you say will ever be okay again. Doesn't look like that works. 
that's a bird and those are also birds. Excuse me, sir, uh, sorry to disturb you, but you hoo can you hear me? Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff. Oh, holy mother, <laughs> a dame, a, a pretty dame on the launch pad. Uh, please, no need to worry, sir, just do stay calm. I, I just want some information. Watch what you're doing, sweetheart. We ain't got no information, no strategies, no plans to tell anyone anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Military regulations, you dig it, man? <laughs> I need to get to Arrowbad, and quick. You go ahead, soldier. I'll stay here and keep you covered. I got the supplies here. I got to keep an eye on them. Tricky job, too, you know? All these bottles. Uh. Uh, please. Can you try and get a grip? I must absolutely find a way out of this industrial complex. Jeez, me too. I've really got to get out of this dump, but not before I've had a little drink. Dear, get your pretty little lips around this. Vodka, tell me what you think. Do you have a vehicle to lend me? I think I'd even test one of your rockets right now if I had to. Toast my rockets? Hey, pretty dame, I'll drink to that. Now, just a minute, we gotta need a special bottle for this special occasion. Something to blow you away. Three, two, one, contact, and we have liftoff! Okay, that's enough. What was that? Uh, did you say something? Are our female comrades revolting or what? <laughs> oh, oh, trouble on its way. <laughs> Bottoms up! Power to the babushkas! I heard that maybe you could lend me a vehicle or something? A vehicle? <laughs> All our vehicles were picked up and shipped out to the borders years ago. General's orders. I say, let us raise our glass to this finest soldier this country's ever known, little lady. I don't mean to offend you, but I'm not in the mood for a drink right now. And you'll live to regret it to your dying day, sweetheart. To your health, while you have it. I was right. going to... I am... We shall hit him on the head. Strange. Sure, I left a bottle and two around here. I gotta get some air. Wall's getting pretty tight. We'll think about that blast off later, huh? Are you okay, Colonel? Are you sure you're all right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Be careful! Don't lean out too far or you'll... Ah! Of course we need a key. Right. He's probably got it though, so that should be fine.
Space Commission is convinced the Hans Vorarlberg's research will yield no concrete results capable of serving the military interests. Um, We have ordered the irrevocable suspension of the program. Reassignment of the test pilots to other programs. Except clearly not our friend here. Not our friend Boris. That's a location we could at least move him to. So maybe there's something. It's all right. Just a little wake-up call, that's all. You must have had quite a bit to drink. Gee, you're right there. Not the first time, either. Probably won't be the last. Man, my head. Please, could you whisper? Please, do excuse me. But it was the only way I could think of to bring you back to your senses. A little extreme, maybe. I get the impression you're a lady who likes to see results. I came here by train, but unfortunately it broke down. I've got to get to Arrowbad immediately. Someone told me you might have a vehicle to lend me. Someone? Who might that someone be? I hope you're not talking about Sergei Borodin. Well, yes, I am. The director of the industrial complex below. Be careful, ma'am. He is not a rational man. He can be mean and very dangerous. He suggested I come and see you, actually. But I get the impression that he doesn't care much for you, either. I don't care what he thinks of me. All I say to you is, watch out for him. 
There aren't many vehicles on this base. When they decided to close the Cosmodrome, they towed all the useful equipment away. It doesn't matter. I'll find some other way. If I can help you, please, just ask. I'm looking for someone. Hans Varlberg. And I think he came by here about 20 years ago. Hans? You want to know if I know Hans? But of course. He invented one of the most incredible flying machines of the Cosmodrome. Christmas, good old Hans. Even after that dumb and dirty trick he played on me. But I wouldn't give to see him again. What do you mean? What did he do to you? Hans Varlberg and his famous flying wing. See? He invented this kind of spring-loaded launcher, capable of projecting a weird rocket into the stratosphere. It was red revolutionary hot. And I was going to be its first test pilot. Holy cow, what a job. And then several days before the launch, Hans disappears into thin air like that. Poof. The test program? Well, it's abandoned. Just disappeared like that? Without saying where he was going? You see, he wanted to hit the stars, but not bombs. If you get my drift. One day, Hans finally worked out what his launcher was really for. So the generals have always called the shots here, you realize. And, and when they asked Hans to screw a nuclear warhead onto his flying wing, well, he wasn't a happy man. So he left. Just like that. If everything was ready, why didn't you just wind the thing up and go flying after all? Nobody understood machines here like Hans, especially not his own utopian inventions. You see, such inventions only live and breathe with their creator in the saddle. Without him, space travel became damn near impossible. Since then, well, I still like to travel, but in my own little way. I'm beginning to understand a bit about how Hans Vorlberg's inventions work. What is this one like? I don't really know. As you can see, I'm a soldier, ma'am. Nothing more, nothing less. I'm not a goddamn aerospace engineer. Don't you find it strange to see so many birds in the Cosmodrome? It's the Iron Rafters. I love them. Nowadays, they can enjoy a bit of good old peace and quiet here. So, of course, they turn up in flock loads. <laughs> Sometimes I set Soyuz on to them. <laughs> Just like the good old days. Soyuz? Soyuz is the last Golden Eagle left in active service. We had to get the dumb canaries out of the way before takeoff, so what did we do? Set the Eagle on them. And <laughs> you should see them fly. Soyuz? He's like a cat among the pigeons. Magnificent. Does Arrowbad mean anything to you? Arrowbad. It's been a long time since I heard that name. It's a spa resort, man. Top brass of the regime would go there. As well as convalescing soldiers, and tired politicians, and profiteers and racketers, the whole caboodle. They'd go live it up, all expenses paid. One privilege I never got. Just two steps away from becoming the nation's hero and no free holiday for me. And where exactly is this place? Further east. We never had to know where exactly. The airship was programmed to take vacationers there. From here. Thank you, sir. It's been great. Mm, the airship. So that must be the big blimp that we saw. Didn't, I, I meant to touch it, but apparently I can't do that. Okay, this seems to be some kind of an office or a control station, but I want to check out the... Oh, can I not just... Go around, really. I can't. I, I, I really have to do this. This is fucking bullshit. 
Yeah, that's the airship then. A proper blimp. I need a key. No, oh, of course, nothing can go like just hello and here we are. No, no, everything needs to happen uh, with uh, at least like 13 different fucking steps. But that's, you know, that's the charm of old adventure games for you. The whole point is that, you know, to, to sir, actually enact uh, something, sir, you need to do, do you think the airship about 15 still works? different things. No idea. It's been so long since it was used. And then I've got to learn how to use it, too. You won't have any worries there. It has an automatic pilot. Go visit if you want. Here's the key. Thanks. Right, I'm off. Don't you? Doesn't look like that works. What the hell is he? Is he in there? No. Hello there, Boris. Ah, there you are. I was looking for you. I've managed to trigger the autopilot mechanism, but the airship still won't take off. Do you know why? Mm, let me. I've got a, some idea. But you look like you're a pretty good mechanic. Let's just say that since the start of the journey, I've managed to get by, and get to know Hans Varlberg's strange contraptions. Okay. I have a deal to make with you. I've been living in this dumb launcher site for years. And I've always said that one of these days I'm going to the stars on that flying wing. And I'd better make that trip before vodka stews my brain. But I gotta know how it works. And you look like you might have some clue at least. If you could help me get to the stars, I'll tell you how the airship works. What do you say? We got a deal? Hmm. Why not? I'll see what I can do for you. Okay then, so we need to make a spaceship fly. Hmm. 
this thing's. Ah, oh, excellent. Blood testing apparatus. Oh, Boris. Comrade Boris, I need a few drops of your blood. Excuse me? To get the centrifuge going, We'll need to analyze the pilot's blood. If you're going to the stars, you've got to be in good health, you see? That's why I need a blood sample. It won't hurt. There's two things a good soldier is always ready to do. Drop his pants and spill his blood. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll only be needing your blood. My pleasure, ma'am. So, in you go. Oh, soon, love. Alcohol level too high. Ah, so that's how it works. Okay. I assume. Okay. Okay, so that's okay. Okay, I think I've figured out how it works. Get settled in and let's go. Colonel, are you all right? Never been better. Head's spinning a bit, but I am used to that. I'm a professional pilot. There you can just about see his little little form walk over the gangway there. Now he's under the rocket. Is it gangway? I don't know. Maybe. Miss Walker! Come in, Miss Walker! Are you receiving me? Uh, clear as smog. Can you speak up? I'm ready. Press the launch button. Colonel, you've forgotten to tell me the secret of the airship. What do I have to do? The airship will need to be right up. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. We have liftoff.
Okay then. Well, I mean, that went markedly better than um, in um, Fallout New Vegas. A crank handle. Now I'm, getting, I'm making an educated um, pointy connecty thingy. That we need to scare away the birds for the airship to work. Alright then, but no more birds, so that's good. Besides, you know, Soyuz needs to eat as well. Soyuz, I believe, means Union. Um, it's also a, a, a type of Russian space rocket that is, I think, still used today. I think it's one of the, the most reliable um, rockets. We seem to have arrived at the the spa town or, or whatever of Arlbad. What do you think you're doing, Kate? I wanted updates. I wanted results. Certainly, Mr. Marson. We all do. Down on the ground, we're doing all we can, but there's no new developments. Kate, I don't think you understand the urgency of this situation. Universal toys are on my back and digging in. I can't hold them off much longer. You're putting the firm in a very tricky situation. I am very sorry, but a slight mishap or two has meant that I've had to modify my mission temporarily. Miss Walker, you're walking on a minefield here. I don't have to underline that this affair is Class A Priority Numero Uno. Hot! I am only too aware of that, Mr. Marson, and believe me, I am doing all I possibly can. But this mission is really no piece of cake. Have all the cake you want and eat it too when you get home. 
Next time I call you, I want something concrete, something solid. I want results. You understand? Results. Yes, Mr. Marson. Hmm. Very kind of interesting take on things, especially on cake. This looks to be the local train station. Looks of like a very arid landscape. There's there's the winder and everything, so at least here we don't we won't have to like search for it. However, um, all things being equal, and currently us being at 46 minutes, I'm gonna end this episode a little bit early, so that we don't just you know so that we'll get to. Um, Experience, explore, possibly explode our old fully and properly in the next episode. So that's going to be it for this time. Um, again, going to be a subscriber thing in the middle. Going to help a lot if you click on that. Maybe I don't know. Up in the left, something um, YouTube's picked for you, and up in the right, something uh, from the full playlist. So um, like, subscribe, share, all those things. Uh, Goodbye.